it would be nice if you could take whatever sense of peace you felt here at the monastery, put it in a box, take it home with you, and open it up to enjoy any time you needed it. But it doesn't work that way. What you can take back with you are the skills. The skills that you learn in meditation and whatever lessons you've learned about how to apply them in life. But you've got to protect them. And the monastery, the environment is conducive. It's part of the protection. When you go to the outside world, though, it's another issue entirely. Very few people out there will encourage you to meditate, to practice. A lot of people wouldn't understand. You have to deal with their defilements on top of your own. So it's good to think of the qualities that do protect you. The Buddha makes a comparison with the different aspects of the practice with a fortress. He says you're building a fortress at the edge of a, of a country, right on the border. And you have to go, <clears throat> you're going to have to deal with the enemies that are going to come in. So what does your fortress have? First it has a moat and a road around it. The moat and the road are your sense of shame and your sense of compunction. Shame not in the unhealthy sense of feeling bad about yourself, but in the healthier sense of realizing that certain things are beneath you and you don't want to stoop to them no matter what. Compunction is the sense that you really do care about your actions and the results. You're not apathetic. You don't say, oh, I don't care what happens. I just want to do what I want to do right now. You think about the long term. These two qualities protect you. And then the fortress has a wall. It's interesting. They said the wall here stands for your discernment. And it's plastered so that nobody from the outside can get a handhold to climb over the wall. In other words, you learn to look at the world around you from the point of view of what's skillful and what's not. What influences do you want to take in? Which ones do you want to put aside? And that goes not only to what other people say or do, but also to the way you look at the world. Have some restraint. If you see that looking at something or listening to something gives rise to, gives rise to greed, aversion, and delusion, learn to look in a different way, listen in a different way. Bring some discernment to what you choose to focus on and how you approach things. After all, it's not the case that things come in from outside and the mind is perfectly still and perfectly calm and all of a sudden the things outside stir it up. All too often we're out there looking for trouble. So you have to look and see when you're looking, who's looking? Is your greed looking? Is your anger looking? Who's listening? Is your anger listening? If you see that these things are doing the looking and listening, ask yourself, well, what would be a wiser way to look, a wiser way to listen? This way you protect yourself. Because otherwise you let the mind roam all over the place in the course of the day. And then when you come back to sit down and meditate, then you've got to pull it all back in. Clean out all the garbage you've been collecting as you've been roaming around. So learn how to look and listen in a way that doesn't collect garbage. That's bringing discernment to your daily life. Now the fortress also has a gate, and the gate requires a gatekeeper. The gatekeeper here is mindfulness together with alertness. They said the duty here is to the gatekeeper is to let people in that you trust and to keep people out that you don't trust. And here again it refers to ideas and sights, sounds, smells, taste, tactile sensations. And also once these things get into your mind, if you notice that something unskillful has gotten into the mind, you have to remember to get it out. So this is not just mindfulness on its own, it's also Alertness. 
And who, who do you have inside the fortress? Well, you've got your right effort. Those are the soldiers. The realization that looking after your mind is your primary, primary responsibility. So if you see anything unskillful coming up in the mind, first you try to prevent it, and if it moves in, then you try to get rid of it. You let it go. As for skillful qualities, you try to give rise to them, and once they're there, you try to maintain them. And how do you do all this? Well, the soldiers have their weapons. The weapons are your knowledge of what the Buddha taught. And as we've discussed over the retreat, this has a lot to do with his instructions on how to fabricate your experience, how to breathe, what ways to think about things coming up, either in the mind or the world outside. How would the Buddha have you think about something? Try to keep that in mind. And then your perceptions. What perceptions are helpful in keeping the mind calm and which perceptions stir it up? Remember in his lessons about dealing with pain. There are ways of looking at the pain can get you all worked up. Other ways of looking at the pain can help you see that the pain is something separate from your awareness. It doesn't have to invade your awareness. And you don't have to think of it coming at you. You can think of it as it arises, it's going away, going away. And you don't have to gather it up. You don't have to think about how long it's been there, how much longer it's going to be there. Just look at the sensations arising and passing in the present moment, and focus on their passing away. And you'll find that you can stay with pain that otherwise you wouldn't have been able to stand. So these are your weapons, remembering the various ways of breathing. So anger comes up in the course of the day, you can breathe in a new way. Because otherwise you either feel that you've got to bottle the anger up which means it's going to explode sometime later, or you just let it out, which means that you've probably harmed yourself or harmed somebody else. This alternative way of breathing gives you another alternative. You can just breathe through the tension that you feel in the body, and then you can deal with the anger without feeling that's something you have to get out of your system. You can deal with it more calmly. Then you bring your ways of thinking around the anger, and you ask yourself, are these helpful ways of thinking or harmful? What kind of perceptions are you holding? So looking at what's going on in terms of these three kinds of fabrication gives you your weapons. So you can protect the mind and protect whatever goodness you've got in there. And of course the soldiers and the gatekeeper need food, and that's what the concentration is for. The Buddha talks about the various levels of jhana, and each level gets the food gets better and better. But you have to remember, you, in order to keep with the practice, you need to have a sense of well-being, whatever the level of concentration is. Try to get a sense of nourishment as you get the mind to s settle down. And you can put aside all your thoughts about sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. Just be there with a the sensation of having a body or being in a body. And trying not to put a squeeze on it, not trying not to put too much pressure on it. Just sit with it lightly. And allow the energies in the body to flow naturally, to flow smoothly throughout the body. That has a soothing effect on the mind, a nourishing effect on the mind, to give you the strength you need in order to keep watch over the mind, to make sure that it doesn't slip off to its old habits. At the very least, it brings awareness to its processes of fabrication. So you can catch yourself when you're out wanting to leave the fortress and going out looking for trouble. You have to stay protected. Now, what the Buddha doesn't mention in this image is another form of protection, and that's goodwill.
is one of the worst ways you can harm yourself, is if you do something hoping for somebody to suffer. And then you have to live with the results of that action. And if you really mean ill, it's a hard, hard action to look back on. It really weighs heavily on the mind. But if you mean well, and then try to go on besides simply meaning well to wanting to do something skillfully, in other words, looking not only at the goodness of your intentions, but also at the results that you're going to get, you realize that this is a learning process. You will make mistakes, but learn how to learn from them. And the best way is to make sure that you start out with that intention not to harm. And then you check to see if you're harming anybody, harming yourself, you stop. If you don't see any harm, you continue. And then after the action is done, you look at the long-term results. And if it turns out you did harm somebody, you go talk it over with somebody. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. We're here to learn. Talk it over with somebody you trust. And then learn that lesson for the next time around. It's this way that your good intentions become skillful. And even when you do make a mistake, the fact that you're operating on good intentions makes it a lot easier to live with the fact that you made a mistake. It's in this way that your practice stays protected, and you're protected, and you're protecting others through your actions. So remember, this is how you protect what you've learned. You develop a sense of shame and compunction as a protection. Try to exercise your discernment in how you look at things and listen to things. You maintain your mindfulness to make sure that unskillful qualities don't sneak into your mind. And if they do, that's, they're going to have to meet with the soldiers of your right effort to get them out. You arm your soldiers with knowledge about how you're fabricating your experience and how you can do it more skillfully. And you feed all of this with the concentration. This way the concentration stays protected, and at the same time it protects the rest of your practice, nourishes the rest of your practice. So even though the fortress is in a dangerous place, this world we live in is a very dangerous place. Not so much because of physical things that people can do to you, but the things other people can get you to do if you're not careful. But if your fortress is strong, then you can stay safe in the midst of danger. That's how you protect the lessons you've learned.